Hey guys, today we're going to look at the finding of the roots and we're going to use our quadratic formula and the discriminant. Before we go any further, let's remember that the zeros of a quadratic formula are the x-intercepts of the graph. We know a quadratic looks like this if I have a plus x squared, and we know it looks like this if I have a negative x squared. And because it turns around, we've got a few scenarios. We've got when I've got two x-intercepts, so it might look like this. We've got if we have one x-intercept, so that's if my vertex is on my x-axis. And we've got if it turns around without even touching the x-axis. We've got those ones are all positive x's. Uh, we can have negative x squared going that way. We can have one going this way. And we can have it going that way. We've talked already this unit that the zeros are the x values that solve a quadratic equation. And today we're going to focus on it in standard form. So the method that we've used before uh, tells us our x-intercepts right away. So when we're factored, we know our x-intercepts are inside the brackets. Change the signs. So we got x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. So in this scenario, I had two zeros. My second one, I've got an x out here and I've got my x minus 5 on the inside. So on the outside, that gives me an x equals 0. And the one with the brackets, we've got x equals positive 5. So again, I have two zeros in that one. And then my third one, I've got this. And because it's squared, that means that I'm going to have the same one twice. So it really only just shows up as one zero because this would be one of the scenarios where it is actually on the x-axis. Not everything factors nicely. Um, sometimes we have to use a different trick. And sometimes all that's left to us is using what's called our quadratic formula. So we talked about this just before March break. And that's when I have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Each of those numbers fits into my quadratic formula. So it's negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. A few very key important points here is that we must have it written in standard form, which is that way. All quadratic equations of this form can be solved using the quadratic formula. And we'll talk about the three different scenarios coming up when we talk about the discriminant. And it's derived by doing some completing the square stuff. But that's okay. We're not going to prove it. We're just going to use it. Sometimes we end up with a negative number under the square root. So that's when we have no real roots. And that's when there is no x-intercept. Okay, let's do an example. So first, let's look at this one and let's just use factoring. So remember with factoring, I need two numbers that multiply together to equal the last and that add together to equal the middle. So I need the same two numbers to satisfy both conditions. So in this scenario, I need two numbers that multiply to 12. And the same two numbers have to add to negative 8. Since I'm adding to negative 8, both my numbers are going to have to be negative. So what multiplies to 12? Well, we've got 1 and 12. We've got 2 and 6. Oh, that'll work. So I've got negative 2 and negative 6 will be my numbers. Once we have our numbers, then we just put them into our answer. So we know, let's see, uh, we've got x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. So when we factored, remember we have it looking like this. And then at the ends of each bracket is where we put the numbers we just found. So we came up with minus 2 and minus 6. Finish it off. That tells me that my x-intercepts are equal to positive 2 and positive 6. Excellent work. All right. Well, what about with this big old quadratic formula? Oh, let's see. All right. So first we need to figure out our coefficients. So a is 1, b is negative 8, and c is 12. And then we can stick our coefficients inside our formula of negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Pop in your numbers. So we end up with negative, negative 